hear such glowing accounts of the tomatoes in Turin and the Piedmont rice. Tomatoes? Oh, I, I believe you call them love apples. Oh, those? Then I can save you a long journey, my friend. Nobody eats love apples outside of the Italians. And as for their rice, it is so good they have a law that prohibits export of a single grain on pain of death. Death? Mm -hmm. For a few grains of rice? Well, that's restraint of free trade. Tell that to them in Turin. I will. is restraint of free trade. Si, senor. But what would you? It is the law. But if one could take out just a little bit... At the border they search you. And if you are caught smuggling out ever so little, <whistles> up comes your head. Are you sure? Maybe you're lucky and they shoot you. No, senor. You had better content yourself with the love apples. They help you to make love. They excite the grand passion. What good is love if you're dead? Yes, I see. I won't take the one without the other. Well... Maybe I could take two small six to the Apennine and my donkey for to leave. Agreed. In advance. Oh, certainly. There. You won't fail me now. Signore. I'm honest! Hey, the carabinier, the pickers, you know. Just one minute, my little pig. Please, I'm honest! Mm -hmm. And I can prove it. The, the foreigner, he tried to bribe me with, with two lire to smuggle rice through the mountains. So? And I refused. Of course. Give me the two lire. What? The two lire. But I only took it to teach him a lesson. I swear it. Now be gone, or I'll teach you a lesson. Please, my arm. Hmm. the trip would be fruitless, but it wasn't. I found a new species of tomato of which the Italians make a delectable paste, and their rice is just what we need for the Carolinas. Yes, yes. Too bad you couldn't get any of it out of the country. But I did. What? I thought you said they searched you with special care. <laughs> they did. Everywhere but in the bandage of my sprained arm, which is long since well. Look. Diable! <laughs> Nine, ten, eleven, 
Twelve. There you are, Jonathan. A round dozen of each. Thank you, Tom. Sorry I couldn't bring more, but we'll make them go as far as they will. Twelve rice seeds and twelve tomato seeds to each of you as long as they last. What the tarnation use is these tomatoes? Ah, uh, good use, Jonathan. Why, the old Aztecs ate them for centuries, and the Italians are eating them now. And there are folks up in Salem and down in New Orleans eating them. We eat them at Monticello, and I'll wager that after you've raised them, your folks are eating them too. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome, Giles. All I ask is that all you farmers give them your best care. Rice can be one of our greatest food crops in the southern states, but tomatoes may come to be grown in all our states. Stay out of there, Pa. You expecting thrashers, Matilda? Fourth of July picnic. Yes, going to all this trouble for a farm here. Oh, now, Ma, when you could have had that nice city fellow from Columbus. What, that dude? Alec Livingston's all right. Old man Grimes says he's the best hand he ever had. He says he's got a regular knack for growing things. Like love apples, I suppose. Oh. Tomatoes, Ma. Alec says when people get over their loony superstitions, everybody will raise them neat, just like potato. Hmm. He's the one that's loony. It I don't know, Ma. More and more people are eating them every day. To hear him tell it. Don't he ever talk about anything else? Whoa! There he is now. Uh, where's the picnic at? Buckeye Lake. Oh. If you ever get there. Wouldn't surprise me if you spend the day in a tomato patch. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Hot, isn't it? Yes, it is, but it's a beautiful day. Whoever said it always rains on the 4th of July? I wish it would rain pretty soon. Well, uh, I'm trying out a, a new kind of tomato, and it ought to have more moisture. Oh. Want to stop by and see him a minute? Oh, I'd love to. Get up! It's been a wonderful day, Matilda. Mm, glorious. The lunch was good, too. Glad you liked it. Oh, I, I hope you didn't spoil your dress. Oh, it'll clean. Not many girls would give up a picnic to carry water like you did. Didn't I suggest it? I bet your mother will sure be surprised you spending your whole 4th of July in a tomato patch. Not very. What? I mean, oh, I don't care. I, I love helping you. I love to watch you with your plans. You seem so, so inspired. You make raising tomatoes seem so, so important. It is important. Giving people better food's about the most important thing there is. Listen, Matilda, I've got a chance to rent the old Clark place, 113 acres. I could raise enough other stuff to live on and, and plant the rest in tomatoes, developing bigger and better ones than there ever was before. And time sell the seed. Well, I... I mean, I could if... if you'd help me, if... Well, would you marry me, Matilda? Would you? Didn't I say I'd love to help you? Look awfully nice. Wait till you see them next year. We'll pick just the best ones for seed. Then the next year, just the best of them. And pretty soon we'll have them all big and round and smooth without these creases. You're a remarkable man, Alex. Oh. How long will it take? A few years. Not many, you'll see.
no use fooling ourselves any longer. I'm a failure. No, you're not. It's been 15 years. But some of them look better than ever, don't you think? Only a few. And I was so sure 15 years ago. Every year, we took only the best fruit for seed. But every year, they came up the same. Some good, some bad. Most of them just middling. Same plants. Some little scrawny ones and a few extra strong, healthy ones like this one here. That is a nice one. If we could only say, say, maybe that's it. What's it? We've been selecting the best fruit, regardless of the plant it grew on. The seed reproduced all the old plant's characteristics, bad as well as good. If we started taking only the best plants and use the best fruit off of them, Matilda, I believe my soul, we've got it. Yes, gentlemen. This is the third year of the new experiment, and I know now it's going to be a success. Fine, at last. Good. We'll put the seeds on the market right away. No, not yet. Why not? Well, I, I want a few more years to make absolutely sure. You've already been at it for 18 years. Yes, sir. I'll be at it 18 years more if it takes that long. I'll let you know when the seeds are ready. only the ripest ones, son. They make the best seed. There, now, I think that's enough pulp. Spread it out to dry. All right. Hollow when it's done. Yep. Well, gentlemen, I've called you here today to tell you that at last we're ready. You, you mean we can put the seeds on the market? Yep. The good characteristics are all set now. Man, do you realize what this means? Up until now, there hasn't been a single acre of tomatoes in the whole United States that would produce one bushel of good ones. And this Paragon tomato will. It'll produce uniformly good fruit on every plant. Oh, that's fine, A.W. You know, all these years I thought I'd be tickled to death when this job was finished, but, but now, doggone it, if I ain't a little bit sorry, it's over. It's not over, A.W. What? I thought this tomato business was a fad, but it's not. More and more people are planting them all the time. Now they'd like an earlier tomato. And what's more, some of the big food preservers have taken it up, like H.J. Heinz over in Pittsburgh. They want fewer seeds. Fine. Fine. You mean you'll undertake these further varieties? I certainly will. Do you have any idea how long that will take? Hey, Pop! Give me another 10 years, and I'll produce a tomato that'll tickle even H.J. Heinz himself. Mrs. Livingston, your husband is a remarkable man. I could have told you that years ago. <laughs> Pectin, 0.25, acid, 0.31, and sugar, 2.58. That's Feeney? Everyone. I know it doesn't seem possible after all these months and years, but at last you've really finished the chemical analysis of varieties of tomatoes from all over the world. Oh, that's what Mr. Hines asked for. You've been working pretty hard, Doctor, especially these last few days. You ought to get some rest. As soon as I see the director. After that, I'm going to bed and sleep for a week. <laughs> so now we know it is possible to control the desirable characteristics of a tomato. Yes, sir. 
Princeton had to depend on trial and error, but that was before Mendel, the Austrian monk, discovered the Mendelian law of plant genetics. Now we know we can breed in or out any plant character we choose. And you really think a tomato can be developed with all these good qualities, all in one? I'm sure of it. Very well. Then get a copy of this off to our experimental farm right away and let them start cross-pollinating. Well, it won't happen overnight, sir. But I promise you, five years from now, Heinz farmers will be growing regularly tomatoes the like of which the world hasn't even dreamed of up to now. Hmm. Well, go to a doctor. And by the way, congratulations. You've proven the value of chemistry in developing a better tomato. Thank you. enter into this contract with you, Mr. Corey. I want to tell you a little about what it means to grow tomatoes for Heinz. I know a little about it, Mr. Barnes. I'm new in this section, but uh, Earl Van Gilder, he's raised for you for years, told me something about it. My farm's the first one east of his. Oh, yes, I know the place. We'll test your soil. I think your South 40 could be put in shape very easily with 424-12 fertilizer. I'll do whatever you say. We feel that you will follow instructions all the more carefully. If you understand fully what's back of them. To the Heinz Company, the growing and preparation of food is a sacred trust. Yes, sir. We furnish the tomato plants because we grow a particular type. One that is best suited to our product. And at the same time, one that is most profitable to the grower. I see. Years ago, one of the many scientists of our quality control department began to analyze tomatoes from all over the world and select the best types. Which were then developed by one of our own scientists was known as one of the world's foremost tomato culturists. It's done through cross-pollination. In our own greenhouses, he selects his plants. For instance, it might be a San Marzano, imported from Italy, with low acidity and high sugar content. With sterilized shears, he cuts away the cluster of anthers in the blossom, leaving the naked pistil. Through the magnifying lens, we see the tiny bud of the new tomato at its base. He then moves to the other plant selected. It may be the Mar Globe, developed by Pritchard out of Livingston's famous Globe tomato. Fine fruit with vigorous foliage. This time he collects from a protected blossom a tiny quantity of pollen dust upon the tip of a brush. He transfers the pollen to the pistil of the first plant, gently brushing it on the moist stigma end. A small perforated glassine envelope is slipped over it and clipped there so nothing can contaminate it. When fertilization is complete, the envelope is removed. If it were possible for you to watch the tomato grow before your eyes, if you could somehow condense days of growing into fractions of seconds, you would find, by force growing, the tiny bud expanding and developing into ripe, red, luscious fruit, containing all the characteristics the scientists wished it to one of the most nutritious. At the peak fection, it is removed from the plant. Its seeds carefully extracted, washed and treated, then replanted and the whole routine gone through again year after year. Even under ideal growing conditions, it takes eight years or more before we will concede that the seeds are ready for use and start the seedlings, which are to be entrusted to you. The seed beds are made ready with soil that has been completely sterilized. Around the middle of March, trained swift fingers sow the seed. When the seedlings are about two inches high, they are transferred to flats be thinned out and transplanted by our girls. Then we take those flats and place them in long underground glass-covered coal frames where they attain a sturdy height of eight to ten inches. That brings us up to the middle of May when the first of our young pedigreed plants are ready to be distributed. Of course, the routine is staggered so that we can distribute plants for a month or more, which will do time to get your field ready. No wonder you folks are so particular about who handles your plants. You bet we're particular. And another thing, you agreed to deliver tomatoes at a specified time. And I mean the precise hour of a given day. I'll give you the exact schedule as the harvest season comes around. I understand. All right, Mr. Corey. I'm going to sign this contract with you. Oh, thanks, Mr. Barnes. You can count on me. And in no time at all, you'll be out there putting in your own plants.
Well, maybe you'd like some cold tomato juice. Thanks, honey. Enough there for the boys, too? Ah, oh, plenty. How are you getting along? Wonderful. The ground's in great shape and the plants are perfect. You know, if we can have a good crop this year, Heinz will take us on steady. That'll give us a cash crop every year at a guaranteed price. It'll be all right. It's got to be. Thanks, honey. I'll send the boys over. Checking the crop. What do you say? Everything's swell. Swell. <laughs> Tomatoes. What's the matter with them? Well, two weeks ago when Barnes was here, they were all right. Now they've got black spots on the leaves. If we lose that crop now... Why don't you phone the Heinz man? Yes, I'm going to. All right, Eddie. Keep your shirt on. I'll be right out. Leaf spot. Comes in warm, damp weather. Like mildew on your wife's roses sometimes. Oh, is it bad? Yes, yeah, some. It kills the leaf that feeds the fruit. But you've caught it in time if you dust the whole field right away. Well, how am I going to dust 40 acres right away? Well, there is one way. That's got it. Is it all right now? Yeah, everything's gonna be okay. We caught it just in time. Oh, Eddie, I'm so thankful. Maybe you think I'm not. Oh, say, Eddie, Mrs. Van Gilder was telling me this morning she works at the local Heinz plant during canning season. She does? Mm-hmm. Lots of the women do. Look forward to it every year. Gives them extra money. And the Heinz people like it because they're all accustomed to preparing food in their homes. Sounds all right. I was thinking, uh, I'd kind of like to. Huh? It's only six weeks out of the year. Mrs. Van says she thinks she can get me on in place of Mrs. Hogan Dubler, who moved away. Well. I think you really want to. Well, then we could buy the furniture for the spare room. I think it'd be fun. Okay. Looks to me like we're getting to be a regular partner of Heinz. <laughs> Government inspectors are taking their places on the platform. That means that trucks will soon be rolling up. 
We'd better get started. This is a busy day for us. Eddie's crop's due today at the plant at 2 o'clock. We'll be ready for you in a moment. Ah, pretty busy. That's right. That's why we have the tomatoes delivered on schedule. This way, neither the farmers nor the tomatoes have to stand around for hours parboiling in the sun. If you had time to follow these tomatoes, you'd see them dry sorted, then dumped into the first washer, rolling over and over under a water spray of 300 pounds pressure, into the soaking tank, then under another spray for the third washing. Next onto a moving belt where girls on either side pair and trim as necessary. This is the last time the tomatoes are touched by human hands. After this, they go through their fourth washing, thence to the scalder and pulping machine to remove pulp, seeds, and skin after which they are pumped through glass-lined pipes to the kitchens for cooking. From here, they are piped to the bottling room. The bottles come out of the sterilizer, glide along the conveyor to the filler, then on to the capper. From here, they move through the cooler to the labeling section, and there you are. This morning, those ripe red luscious tomatoes were growing in your field. This afternoon, they're Heinz ketchup or chili sauce or Heinz soup or tomato juice, as the case may be. Wow, talk about fresh. That's the idea. Now let's have a look at your tomatoes. Hi. I just got home myself. How is everything? Here, Mrs. Edson Corey, is the check for the tomatoes. Oh. And here is the contract for next year. Oh. Honey, we're on our way. Oh. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, it is kind of wonderful, us being a grower, putting things in the ground and watching them grow, working for a company like Heinz. Makes you sort of feel as if you were part of something, something big something that's been going on for a long time. Ever since Eden, I guess. Giving the world better food. Making it more fun to be alive. Wow. 